Hey everybody, it's Mr. 95 Cents. We're here for Mr. 95 Cent Sport Car Adventures. How we doing everybody? Oh, we're here today. It's a beautiful day in New Jersey. Not bad. Most of the smoke is gone. The big smoke from Canada. And we're doing okay. We got that orange haze. It looks like it's pretty much gone. We'll see. We're going to be opening up, oh, some 2022 Panini Contender Football today. We got a nice blaster box, which guarantees us a hit, I think. So we're going to get something later. But the first thing we're going to do is our prizes. All right, let's see here. All right, so we got, oh, for first out of the box, the Prison Baseball Pack. Second out of the box, we got the 1977 Kellogg's Steve Carlton card. Third out of the box, we got the 1977 Topps Robin Yount card. And fourth out of the box, we got the National Baseball Card Day Pete Alonzo rookie. All right. We got a lot of tickets in here. We're going to hand mix them first. There we go. We're going to hand mix them first here. All right. Okay. Got to mix them up. All right. They're all mixed up here. All right. Good luck to everybody. Here we go. All right. The first out of the box. Oh, I got two tickets here. First out of the box is, oh, Red Rum. Hey, Red Rum. I was just watching one of his videos this morning. Yeah, he's one of my featured channels down there. Check him out. He's got a good channel. A lot of stuff. All right. Second out of the box, the Steve Carlton. All right. We're going in for this one. And we got one ticket. Here he comes. Dr. Mantis Teabogging. Oh, Dr. Mantis Teabogging right there. All right. He's got the Steve Carlton coming. All right. We're going to mix it up. Uh, with a Robin Yount. Here we go. Poor Man Stack. Poor Man Stack with the Robin Yount. There we go. And we got the Pete Alonso. Pete Alonzo. Oh, Beth Peterson. Beth Peterson. Oh, she got she likes the Mets too. That's what I heard. All right, there you go. Uh, now I got a few people that have never uh, sent me their address. I'm not want to mention any names, but if you won a prize and you didn't get your prize yet, you probably either didn't send me your address. Or maybe I missed it in my email somehow. It's possible. I get a lot of emails. So my email is sportspg at AOL.com. S-P-O-R-T-S-P-G at AOL.com. If you never got a prize from me, especially, I definitely don't have your address. You have to email me your address and I can send out your prize. So if you're sitting home thinking, I didn't get my prize yet. So I message the people, but sometimes maybe they don't see the messages. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm here with a few prizes nobody's claiming so we'll see we'll give it maybe to the end of the month if nobody claims the prizes then we'll put them out again that's all all right so oh i want to all my featured channels down below i was watching a bunch of stuff last night and this morning i had a little bit of time and boy they got some good stuff on here so check out all my featured channels down below there's a lot of great channels a lot of hours of knowledge and entertainment all right we're going to go right to warehouse finds we got a stack that we put on the side here to show everybody all kinds of different stuff and we're going to start off with some non-sports and this is back in the day uh, these were back in the day 25 cents a card with these old stickers that are on them uh, this is a 1978 Battlestar Galactica card and sometimes you look these up now sometimes they don't go for much more sometimes they're a few bucks now you know we got a Another Battlestar Galactica. It's a story summary. This is, a, this, what's this say? Yes, they all say story summary. So they might be kind of inserts or something because there's only 11 story summaries. So these are a couple inserts. Oh, one of my favorite movies. We got Rocky. Rocky, what year are these from now? Jeez, these are from 1979. Rocky II. The Rocky II movie, yeah. 
Oh, we got Adrian from the Rocky movies. So it's crazy. You never know what I'm going to find in these boxes. It's crazy. I found some extreme sports skateboard type of cards. Uh, we have uh, one of my old high school buddies. His son runs a skate shop in, in Morristown here. And I, when I get a bunch, I send them and he likes them. We got a Kenny Anderson. There's one one big name in here I know. Jaron Grob. He's not the one. Todd Grossman. I mean, these might, guys might be famous skateboarders. I don't know who they are. What year are these from? Let's see. These are from 2000, so they're 23 years old. <laughs> this guy, though, I've heard of. He's got a TV show, I think. Rob Drydeck. I think he had a show on MTV. I think he's still on. This is back then, 20-some years ago. Jeez, he was 25 years old when this card came out. All right. We got a Jamie Thomas. So I'll send those cards to him. He'll be happy. I got a couple of other ones, too. You know who had skateboard cards? That uh, Fleer Metal Universe stuff, the one with Jordan on the blaster. That had some skateboard stuff, too. Uh, we got some hockey. We got a lot of, talk about Metal Universe. We found another big batch of Metal Universe cards. I'll show you a few of them. We got a Vitaly Yamensev rookie card. And as with the old metal, you can tell the rookies because it's etched in the picture, rookie. We got a Luke Robitaille. And I've said it before, they, they try to reproduce the metal. It doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't look like this metal. This metal looks really good. We got a Vanek Perrault. I hope I'm... Oh, Yannick. Yannick Perrault. All right. Sean McEckern. I'll show you a couple. I'll just skip over a couple because there's a big stack here. Oh, that's a hard name to say. Roman As. Excuda? I don't know. I'm trying to say the names right. <laughs> Sean McEckern. Got a Cam Neely. I remember Cam Neely. Oleg Tavernasdowski. But they have all different patterns and stuff. They really were pretty nice, these cars. We got a Darian Hatcher. A lot of these teams don't exist. This was a Whaler card. Andrew Cassells. Yep, the old Whalers. Got a Scott Mellonby. And oh, here's, an, here's another rookie. Jerry Lettinen. With the rookie etched in. And we got a Valerie Kamensky. All right, we're going right on to football here. We got a little bit of Newton. It looks like we got some old football. We got a Topps Dynasty, NFL Dynasty, Dallas Cowboy, Deion Sanders. Got a playoff contender uh, from 2006, the round numbers. They're still doing the round numbers in the new stuff now. But we got a round two, Devin Hester and Greg Jennings. <clears throat> who are pretty good for round two players. Yeah. Now, this is a uh, Topps Johnny. Is it, uh, what are they calling this? Topps Honor Roll. And they have a lot of old players. Topps uh, Johnny Blood McNally. This is from 2008. Johnny McNally, his nickname was Blood. <laughs> This was an unusual card. This is from Absolute, I believe, the old Absolute stuff. From uh, what year? That's what we want to know. And, of course, it's very small. Looks like 1998 or 9. But that's uh, like a Bengal team card, and it's all acetate. And it's got the big players in there that were big in that year. Anybody that we know? Let's see. Akili Smith, Corey Dillon. Yeah, they were okay a little bit in their day, but, you know. Uh, some old cards. 
these look like from 1979. We got a David Whitehurst. I don't remember him. Apparently quarterback for the Packers. We got a Bob Parsons. Oh, I remember this guy. This guy was good. Dave Casper, tight end for the, the Raiders. He was good. This guy was also good. Greg Pruitt. Greg Pruitt from the Browns. Good running back. Yeah, I'm looking on the back here. He's got one, two, three. Three years over 1,000, and the fourth year was 960. So that's not bad. Got Jerry Shirk. Real good lineman from the Browns. Dave Dolby from the Raiders. Yeah, most of these guys, I remember them. They were good. Steve Zabel. Got a Gary Fennick. Don McCauley from the Colts. And this guy was good. Harold Carmichael from the uh, Eagles. He was a good wide receiver. Yeah. What, that was 78. He had over 1,000 yards receiving. That was big back then. Got a little bit of basketball. What do we got? I I always like these cards. These are pretty new. What are these from? 2017, 18? But they still make the same kind of style today. They're revolution cards. And I they don't give you... I think... Nowadays, they don't give you any hits guaranteed in the box, but their cards are always nice. This is a Dylan Brooks rookie. Just a base card, but they're really shiny. Yeah, I thought they were sharp. They're hard to get in good shape because they. this one's not bad. They actually chip a little bit. We got an old uh, Skybox Hoops Michael Jordan from 2004-2005. Got a Supreme Court, Patrick Ewing. Oh, this is nice. 1992 USA basketball team, Chris Mullen. The USA Olympics. We got, uh, oh, this is an insert. What do we got here? Oh, geez, stuff is dropping. We got a all-NBA second team Scoring Kings, it looks like. Mitch Richmond. And we got some baseball, a lot of baseball. We got, these were nice, the Mini Cracker Jacks of Derek Jeter. It's a Mini Cracker Jack card. Oh, this is a, there's 93 classic best gold. These were nice. Chipper Jones. Now, this was from that, I believe it was from that UD, yeah, UD3 set. It was a little, it was a, I liked the set. It was a little bit off off the wall, sort of. Generation Next, Edgar Renteria. Yeah, they were nice cards. We also got a Generation Next, Jason Kendall. So that's back when he was a rookie, so we're talking a while ago. Yeah. This guy is starting to go a little bit. I know we saw a couple of him online. I saw a card of him online last week uh, from the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's a Bowman Chrome prospect. Uh, looks like a teal refractor, number to 125 of Mitch Keller. Yeah, he sold a little bit last week on eBay. We got a Fusion from... Oh, this is from the... Uh, 2000 Skybox Metal. It's a Fusion. Mike Messina, Cal Ripken Jr. insert. That's from 2000. Oh, this next batch of cards is interesting. So, when we had 9-11, Topps made some special cards in their regular set. I believe they're, they're regular numbered in their set, but they're very nice. And they were the uh, America uh, United We Stand cards, they call it, like a subset in a regular set. Very patriotic. We got a Sammy Sosa. 
had the flag in his hand. And it's they show you for which game because all all the teams were celebrating, you know, patriotism and stuff. We got a Diamondback versus Rockies, and they're out there with the flag. Yeah. This is a Braves versus Phillies and all the players. This is Diamondbacks and Rockies, and this is Kurt Schilling, the back of his head. And if you look on the hat, it says, God bless America, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, God bless America on the back of Schilling's cap. Here's the uh, Angels versus Mariners. And on the back, they have a story about, you know, the tragedy and everything and a little bit what the team did. I remember the Yankees would go to visit firehouses. And then we got an Astros versus Giants. And there's Barry Bonds in the middle. There he is. Yeah, yeah they were nice cards. I put a bunch of them on the side. I liked them. All right, what else we got? Let's see. More baseball. We got a 2000 Bowman. This is like a uh, parallel of the set. I call them the TV cards because they look like a TV. Josh Hamilton, who back then was super hot. I, got, I don't know if you guys remember him with the home run derby. He did pretty well, but then he had some problems. Let's see. Let's throw that, this card over there. We got an SP Excitement. Cal Ripken Jr. insert. Right there. Oh, these were nice. This is the uh, Topps Chrome. The, uh, oh, what do they call this? Wrecking Crew. It's a Wrecking Crew insert from Topps Chrome, and that's Jeff Bagwell. Oh, this one I got to open up. So this one was, I believe, from SP Upper Deck? Yeah, SP Upper Deck. So... I'm trying to remember what they call these, but it's Jeff Bagwell. He's got a picture on the front, picture on the back, and this part comes, pulls out. We'll see if they'll pull out after all these years. Oh, geez. Uh-oh. Well, oh, here it comes. All right, I got it. It pulls out with the stats and a story, and on the back, there's a more of a story. They were just uh, interesting cards, and it goes back pretty good. All right, that's, geez, these are from uh, probably the late 90s, so this is over 20 years old. That's why it got stuck. <laughs> All right, well, we got another Cal Ripken. We got a Topps Profile Cal Ripken where Kirby Puckett talks about him on the back. Uh, we got a Upper Deck Anniversary Team, Jeff Bagwell. And I found one of these. This is the flip books, but they're pretty pretty new. They're not that old. I think this one's from 2002. This is the uh, Alfonso Suriano. So if I was to open this up, this is all completely sealed. If I was to open it up and flip it, you could see a motion thing. Like the old uh, flip books. And that's all sealed up, factory sealed. Oh, and then we got a bunch, found a more, more 1963s. We got a Johnny Romano from 1963. Tony Cloninger. A little bit old baseball, 63. Now, what's that, 60 years old? Jeez. So if these guys were like 20 back then, now they're like at least 80. Larry Sherry. We got a Tribe Thumpers, Johnny Romano and Tito Francona. Dean Chance. Roger Craig. A lot of these guys ended up being coaches and stuff. Um, this is, I think the one guy that was there as an umpire. Norm Sherry. I think he was an umpire. 
We got a rookie one. Who's on this one? George Williams, Vic DeVio, Phil Roof, and Pete Ward. I remember all of them. And if you look at uh, George Williams, he was on the Colt 45s. Let's take this out there. Which became the Astros. Yeah. Got a Norm Seaburn. A Billy Gardner. You got an Earl Batty. A Chico Fernandez. And this guy was a great player, I believe, for the Phillies most of the time. And then at the end, of course, they ship guys out. He ended up with the Mets. Richie Ashburn. Great ball player in his day. Oh, there's one more in the back of that. Okay. Oh, I can't forget. This guy is a Boston, old-time Boston Red Sox favorite. I think he ended up being a coach or something over there. Frank Malzone. Not too much anymore because most of those guys, you know, the old-timers knew. The, the new kids don't know that much about the old-timers anyway. And uh, they used to ask me for his cards. So he was very popular at the store for, with the Red Sox fans. All right. And that's it for our warehouse finds. We're going to go on to some card shop stories now. So I thought about this the other day because one of the stores got broken into. I'm on a Facebook channel with store owners only. I've been on it for quite a while. And it's not too bad now, but geez, back a year or two ago when things were really hot, cards were really hot. Amongst the 200 and we'll say 40 stores, there was probably a break in almost every week. And they would post it, you know, this way if somebody's trying to sell the especially expensive cards that they stole, they would, we if they went to another store, we would know. Uh, and they would do everything. They would, uh, they were coming through ceilings. They were coming through walls. They were driving through into stores, you know, and guys... Eventually, a lot of guys put up a lot of security. Uh, but back in the day, it didn't happen that often. But, I mean, I was around for a little over 30 years. So I had uh, two instances in, in an over 30 years, which is not terrible. And uh, the first instance I had uh, with a break-in, we had, geez, all no windows. We had the front window, which wasn't that big because uh, it was a converted office. And uh, yeah, I guess you could have smashed into that and got in the store, but it wouldn't have been that easy. And then our door was glass, but we had metal bars going across, and that's just the way it, it was built. So in the back, the only other window in the place was this pretty small window. I mean, you had to be skinny to get in it. But it had the... Uh, it had the uh, the glass was like that cloudy glass, but with the metal uh, mesh in it. It had metal mesh in it. So I used to park in the back. So one day I came in, and here's the window. Not it's still there, but it's all smashed up. And right on the ground is a railroad tie, because we weren't that far from the railroad, I guess. So uh, this is in downtown Morristown. So I says, oh, geez. So I checked. Nobody got in, you know. Uh, but they tried. They smashed the hell out of that window. But the, thank God the mesh wouldn't go, you know. I also had an alarm in the place, you know. They would have got in the back room. But if they got in the store, there would have been a, a motion detector or something went off. So uh, I would hope. And uh, so I called the cops just to make an incident report, you know, and see. Because I'm thinking uh, this had to happen, you know, some probably in the early morning or whatever night. I, mean, I was there till 10 o'clock that night. So uh, so I figured maybe we had neighbors, you know, like we were like right near a residential area. So I figured I'd call the cops. Maybe they'll find out who it was. So the cop pulls up. Now, this is how long ago it was. This guy was a new cop in town. Uh, you know, pretty much fresh uh, rookie almost. He's now police chief. All right. So I showed him what happened. I told him every, you know, he's looking. And he, he uh, after about five, ten minutes, he goes, okay, all right. And he starts getting his car and he's going to take off. And I says, 
geez, you didn't write nothing down. He goes, oh, well, you know, nothing happens. I said, what do you mean nothing happens? Somebody try to get in. I said, they might try to get in again. He goes, well, they didn't get in. I says, all right, I don't want to argue with the cops. I says, all right, whatever. No investigation, no nothing. You know, I says, okay. I was ready for a big in investigation. <laughs> and, and that was it. Uh, so he's now police chief. So we got... We might have problems here. I don't know. He's been pleased. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. What are you, you going to do? So anyway, uh, that was the only time Morristown ever they tried to break in. I mean, we had shoplifting problems there. But that's the only time they tried to break in. So then fast forward, we opened up the Mars Plane store. And there was only one instant there where they didn't get in. Uh, some, somebody tried to jimmy the door. Actually, there was two. But one was serious. Somebody tried to really jimmy the door to like push their way in, I guess. Uh, and the door alarm went off. So they ran away. Well, that night, that person broke into, I think, three other stores on the strip. We had a little strip of businesses there. And uh, I mean, we're talking now. Oh, geez, early 2000s, and still a lot of people didn't have security, I guess. You know, he, he broke into stupid stuff like a pizzeria, you know, stuff like that. Where I'm thinking they don't have that much cash, I would think, but who knows. So they ended up, Mars Plains cops were pretty good. They went into a big investigation. I remember they came and fingerprinted the door, the whole works, you know. Uh, and he didn't get in my place, but they still fingerprinted the door and did an investigation. They found out... It, it, it was a homeless guy who was living in a shed, like in the neighborhood, in the back of somebody's yard. And they didn't know he was living in there. And he was living in there, they said, for at least a couple of weeks. You know, it was during the, I want to say, not, well, it might have been somewhere around the winter, but not like dead winter. You know, late, late winter, maybe, you know, early spring. I guess the people didn't do the yard work yet, so they didn't go, didn't go into the shed. <laughs> so here he is, and there's got all kinds of, you know, wrappers and stuff, and so they caught the guy, you know. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, tell you the truth, a guy like that, most of the businesses in Mars Plains, if he said, to, and most of the businessmen I knew, they were very kind. If he says, I, I'm homeless, I need some, you know, either money or food, they would have gave it to him. So, but he ended up breaking in the three businesses, and then sort of wrecked my door. I mean, he banged up my door a lot. Uh, then there was another one in Morris Plains that did very little to me. There was a guy that showed up out of the blue, uh, beginning of a spring, and he was very friendly, came in the store. He wanted to wash everybody's windows. I already had a guy, so that I knew for a long time. So I'm not going to get rid of my guy. So I, I said, well, thanks a lot. I said, but I got a guy already, you know, even though he was half the price, this guy, I said, nah, I said, I got a guy already. So I said, appreciate it. But he used to come in the store, say hello. If you didn't need anybody, you know, let me know. I said, all right. But he did have a bunch of customers on the Avenue and uh, everybody thought he was a great guy. Very friendly. Every time he went by, he'd stop, say hello, blah, blah, blah. You know, I really didn't know anything else about him. I didn't, you know, spend any time with him. He didn't wash my windows. So we had a problem where our, I came in one day and our door, like, lock is broken off. We had a storm door and wasn't a very big, you know, like, highly secure door done, but that lock was broken. And then, you know, I guess somebody tried to get in the other one, but they didn't get in. And there was no damage on the inside door. So I called the cops because the cops were actually, the police station is right across the street in Mars Plains. So they came over and uh, they said, oh, we had a rash of break-ins last night. I said, you did? Yeah, this one got broken into, that one got broken into. And like I said, we were the store with the valuable stuff, uh, but I had high security, you know. Uh, the other stores were like beautiful a beauty parlor or stuff like that. So I thought about it and just hit my brain. I said, you know something? 
they asked me if there was any unusual activity. And this is maybe like the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. And I said, uh, there's one guy that, and I think he washes windows at those places. He's the only new thing I can think of. Because Mars Plains, there wasn't a lot of new people walking around. So they looked into it. He actually, uh, now they never found out if he did it or not. He was a high suspect because this is what happens. They found out that the next, that day, he, he lived in a homeless shelter in Morristown. I'm not going to mention the name. We got a couple. He lived in a homeless shelter in Morristown. And that day he checked out and they haven't seen him. So he disappeared out of the blue. And there's still a couple more months to wash windows. But it's only like maybe September. <laughs> so wherever this guy came from, nobody saw him after that. So... So watch, watch out. Uh, the model of that story is watch out and maybe not hire strangers till you find out something about them. But uh, who knows? But he, he was, they never caught nobody. They figured it was him, you know, so. Uh, and then I had the store in Randolph, big security, no instances. Uh, but this is something. When I sold the store, eh, maybe two months later, it got robbed. And Phil had good security. He had cameras and motion detectors and everything. And what he uh, what happened, he had it all on film. What happened, uh, the guy walked up. I never knew this. The guy walked up and he had a spark plug in his hand. He's all masked up, dressed in black and everything. He had a uh, spark plug in his hand and threw it at the door, and I didn't notice, there's an element in the spark plug that if it hits glass, like that kind of glass, it shatters. And he just walks right in. The alarm goes off. He's not in the store too much. He's in the store maybe three minutes tops. Thank God he, I guess he knew the cops were going to come, you know. And uh, thank God he didn't know how long it took him to come, because it took him 11 minutes to get there, I think. Because Randolph's a big town, so they're all, all the way across town. So uh, he got away with about $10,000 worth of stuff. Uh, singles. He must have cased the joint before. Because this is, like I said, this is a couple years ago when things were going hot and robberies were up. And uh, he uh, stole some really valuable cards out of the case. He stole wax, you know. Thank God he was in a rush and figured he didn't have much time uh, because Phil also had cameras outside the store and he showed up, but the way we figured there's woods on the side of the mall because they have a, a surveillance camera from another business that shows two car lights out in the distance on, on the highway. So they figured that he cut through the woods and went in and out of the car that way. And maybe there was somebody even driving the other the car, but so uh, and this was like I guess three four o'clock in the morning. So he he took a chance because the cops do go up and down the highway. So he took a big chance for that money, but I guess people sometimes are desperate. So uh, but anyway, that's the history of the store with break-ins. Otherwise, it was just a little bit of shoplifting and not much. So that was good. <laughs> but uh, things seem to have calmed down. I'm still on that page with st store owners. And it's not as much anymore. It might be once a month now instead of every week. And it was bad. you know. But guys have upped their security. I know the one guy, the guy they drove the car into or the truck, he put the, like those metal pylons in front of his store now. <laughs> so you can't do that. It's crazy. you know. So eh, that's the way it is. Other things, these are things you got to worry about when you're a store owner, unfortunately. And that's my car shop story for today. All right, we're going right to box break. Oh, so what are we getting here? So this has got eight cars per pack, five cars per box. I think I, I opened this a while back when it first came out, and I got a Kenny Pickett jersey. So this had a 5-1 autographed or rookie ticket swatch variation per box. So I like that because... You're going to get an autograph or you're going to get a rookie uh, jersey card, which is nice. And these run, I think, about 30 bucks, so they're not too bad. All right, let's open her up. There's, I mean, there's other stuff you can get. 
Let's see what, what else. Oh, the Ultra Rare Stardust Parallels. I think last time I got one of those and was a good player, too. I did good last time. Let's see what happens. All right, we'll throw this in the garbage. But, you know, 30 bucks, you can't get hurt, you know? There's always going to be something. Even if you put them in your 50-cent box, there's cards that, that you can turn into a little bit of cash. All right, let's see what we got in pack one here. Oh, we got Tom Brady right off the bat. And I always like these ticket cards. They're nice. We got Jamar Chase. We got a Keenan Allen. Cortland Sutton. Got a DK Metcalf. Matthew Stafford. We got a Lamar Jackson. And a rookie of the year, Traylon Burks. Right, here we go. Let's see, we'll throw this garbage in the box. All right, what do we got in this one? We got a Taylor Henneke, a Dalvin Cook, a Baker Mayfield, Kadarius Tony. We got Ezekiel Elliott, Mac Jones, a Matt Ryan. Oh, this is nice. This is a, a contender MVP, Trevor Lawrence. That's nice. I'm doing good already. Got an insert every pack so far. The only thing about this stuff, it's hard to get a regular rookie out of it. That You'll get rookie inserts, rookie jerseys, but a regular rookie out of a blaster is not easy. We got a Michael Thomas. A Darnell Mooney. Devonta Smith. We got a DeAndre Swift. A Travis Kelsey. A Joe Burrow. A Mike Williams. And an MVP, Tyreek Hill. I still got two packs to go. And I'm supposed to get something. We'll see what happens. Uh, next pack here. What do we got? We got a Kyler Murray. Corderell Patterson. We got a Darren Waller. Amari Cooper. Debo Samuel. We got a Aaron Rodgers, who's now with my Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> we got a Najee Harris. Oh, here's our round numbers. Remember I showed you the round numbers? This is from the first, uh, oh, this is nice, okay. This is from the first round. We got a Jahan Dotson and a Jamison Williams. First round, round numbers. And we got one pack left, let's see. And we hope we get a hit. Well, I don't see a, it doesn't look like a jersey card. So I think we either got, yeah, I don't see anything thick in there. So either we got an autograph or we got screwed. You never know. Because <laughs> they always put that in little... Yeah, look at it. You can almost not read it. Per box on average. All right, let's see. Oh, but there's something upside down in this one. So I think we got the autograph, which is not that easy to get. We got Javante Williams. <clears throat> we got it. Oh, Gino. My man, Gino. Shaquille Leonard. We got a J.J. Watt. Jamison Winston. We got a Justin Fields. Okay. Oh, we got an insert, too. Oh, that's nice. A touchdown tandem. I like these. They're not in every box. We got a Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs. That's nice. And Oh, we got an autograph. We got a rookie ticket autograph. All right, I'm not sure who this guy is, but he's from the Bills. It's a Balin Specter rookie ticket autograph. I have to check into that. I don't know who he is. Let's just say, played for Clemson. A lot of tackles, 75 tackles. 
So that's nice. All right. I can't complain. I got an autograph. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the one good thing about those boxes. For 30 bucks, you get something, you know. I mean, a lot of boxes are 25, 30 bucks. You don't get nothing. So, but that's my box break. All right. Uh, what was I going to remind you of? Oh, uh, I, I'm going to put, this video is going to go on a little bit later than usual. I was at a uh, Learn to Ride event by Avenues in Motion. Uh, great, I want to give them a plug. Great organization. They keep, they teach little kids how to ride bicycles. It's, it's fun. Uh, they take the uh, pedals off the bike first and let the kids walk around this big circle they got. We actually did it in a hockey arena in town here. They had the whole hockey arena. Uh, you know, they took the ice out and they weren't on the ice. And then if they do good and they feel comfortable, they put the pedals back on and they got another part of the arena where they let them ride with supervision. So it's a great way to teach kids how to ride bikes better than when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I mean, I got a, uh, we had a big front yard. I remember my father used to, well, that's how, I tell you how I learned to ride a bike. He put me on the bike, which was probably too big for me, and said, and pushed it and said, there you go. And I ended up in the pricker bush on the side. And that's how I learned how to try to ride a bike. But that's back in the old days. We're talking, geez, how old? 1961 is 1962. I think it was about five, six years old. So, but we rode our bikes all over. You know, that's the thing we were talking about at this event. I, I'm, I'm in a... I'm in a kind of snooty neighborhood. I don't see anybody really riding a bike around here. So, I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, we're going to go with the clothes. All right, we're going to show you the prizes. So, if you comment on this video and you're a subscriber on the next video, you got a chance for one of these prizes. First out of the box for the next video is going to be the 2019 it's the Panini Knights at a Round Table Pack, which you never know what's in these. Second out of the box is going to have a Panini Prism Draft Pick Jared Goff rookie card. I just found that in the box. Third out of the box is going to have the Donruss Elite Series rookie DK Metcalf. And then fourth out of the box is going to be a, an insert I just picked up. I liked it. it. Was an Airborne Rookies and Stars Jim Kelly card. That was a sharp card, I thought. The airborne card. And that's our prizes. All you have to do is make a comment on this video and be a subscriber. And on the next video, you got a chance to win those prizes. All right. Also, we got our big kitchen table box break this Monday. So it's a local thing only because I don't mail stuff out for it. The price, I mean, we charge between two and four bucks a, a spot. So there's no mail uh, price in there. Uh, but we'll be here. I, I broadcast on, on Facebook on the stores page. That's the uh, uh, Wow Sport Cards, uh, a.k.a. the Sports Page MC Game Room. So if you want to check that out, you have to be a participant to do the trivia and all that. But you can you can watch. It's entertaining. We do four uh, different box breaks for the night because that's my limit. Then I get tired. And then after that, we go in the living room and BS. Mostly about the hobby. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Also, check out our eBay. We're on eBay at Sports PG, S P O R T S P G, and uh, we got a lot of stuff on there. I think we hit, we went over the thirteen thousand five hundred mark. A lot of stuff on auction, wax, all kinds of stuff. Also, our C O M C, Mister Ninety Five Cents on C O M C, forty five, forty six thousand items on there. All right, and that's about it. All right, so. Um, like I said, it's going to go up a little later than usual. Not too late, though, because I was busy this afternoon. But it was fun, and it was for a good cause. All right, thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Don't forget, collect what you like, because if it goes up or down, you still like it. And try not to buy a box more than 120 because what you were getting out of this stuff usually isn't worth it. All right, take care now. Have a good one. See you later.